Welcome back. Now we're going to derive a formal recurrence that captures the cost of an optimal binary search tree. We'll define C sub ij as the average number of key comparisons, thus we're going to use C, in an optimized binary search tree with keys ki through kj. Now, as we saw last time, we could use any one of these keys as our root. So we need to consider all of those possibilities. Remember, we're going to be taking the minimum. We'll run L, running from I up to J, to consider using each one of these things as our root. Now, the cost of that is going to be the cost of the average number of key comparisons in an optimal binary search tree using keys I up to but not including key L. This is the left subtree. This is the right subtree, which contains keys L plus 1 through J. Assuming that we've already computed these costs, we add them together and we take the minimum. We're not done yet, though. There's an additional cost of creating this new root value. Recall our picture from before, where the left subtree contains keys I, through L minus 1, and the right subtree contains keys L plus 1 through J. When it was just this tree, it had some depth. When it was this just this tree, it had also had some depth. We're necessarily increasing the depth of both of these trees by 1 by creating this new root variable and making the entire tree deeper. We need to account for that. If we're going to increase the depth by one for this tree and this tree and this one single root key, that means that we're going to add one comparison to every single one of these keys in this binary search tree. That only requires that we sum up all of the probabilities of searching for all these keys. We do have a number of comparisons here. It's just one because that's all we're increasing it by. We sum up all the probabilities of all the keys, K1 through KL minus 1 and KL, KL plus 1 all the way to KJ, all of the keys. Now this one is irrelevant to the minimum value here. So when we actually go to write pseudocode, we only need to compute this once. And it doesn't need to factor in to find in the minimum value, L, that gives us the best solution. Now we need to think of a few base cases. In particular, what is the cost of a single node tree? The interpretation here is that this is the cost of the average number of key comparisons in an optimal binary search tree containing keys ki through ki, in other words, one key. We know that that is. A single node tree only costs us one comparison, and to weight it, we need to multiply by the probability so it's just simply the probability of searching for that key. We also have another base case. This is taking into the account that you've got an empty tree. Keys i through i minus 1, since they're in order, there are no keys. And the cost of searching an empty binary search tree is 0. Finally, we want to identify our final solution. Which solution are we interested in? Well, we're interested in building an optimal binary search tree that contains all of the keys, keys K1 through Kn. This is going to be the one that we're ultimately interested in. At this point, we can go ahead and design a tableau that captures all of these things. So we want to compute C sub ij. This suggests a tableau.
using i as the rows and j as the columns. We'll start i at 1, and we'll run it up 1 past n. This will be apparent in a second here. We'll run j from 0 up to n. Now let's identify our base cases in this table. The optimal value of keys 1 through 0 is 0 because that's an empty tree. Likewise, the optimal value from 2 to 1, that's empty as well. So all along the diagonal here, we will have zeros. This section of the table is irrelevant, or you can fill it with zeros likewise, because everything in here is an empty tree. Now our other base case. Keys 1 through 1, that's simply just going to be the probability of searching for key 1. Key 2 through 2 is the probability of searching for key 3, and so on. So our base cases take care of the first two diagonals here. Now what's our final cell that we're interested in? Again, we're wanting to build an optimal binary search tree with keys K1 through Kn. So there's our final cell. We want to be able to fill out the rest of this table and get this as our final solution here. Before we can do that, we need to understand how to fill out this table. What are the dependencies of each cell in this table? Let's think generally in terms of i and j. We need to compute this cell right here. What are its dependencies? that for each L, we have to consider both of these values here. When L is equal to I, what value is this? It's the, the two cells that we're interested in are C sub I and I minus 1, meaning that it is in the same row, but some column over here. C sub i plus 1 is one row down, and j is unchanged, so it's in the same column. These two values would match to give us our first possibility. When L is equal to i plus 1, we have which is the next one over, and the second one is one row down. Now you can start to see a pattern emerge. We will take the minimum value of each one of these combinations. So in other words, to, in order to compute C sub ij, we'll have had to compute the entire row up to that point and the entire column below it up to that point. This suggests a pattern in which we need to fill out this table. We need to fill it out top to bottom. We need to fill it out top left to bottom right, working up towards our final cell up here. If we follow that pattern, then every cell that needs to be computed will have every cell that it depends on already computed. Having already taken care of our base cases on the first two diagonals, we simply need to come up with a loop that will take care of each one of these. In the next part, we'll go over the pseudocode that does just that.